Hello guys, Stay Patient here with a bit of footage from this weekend's tech test for Titanfall 2. Forgive my poor performance, this gameplay is from my first and only two matches which was all I had time for, so I was still figuring things out and I only ever played a small amount of the first Titanfall almost two years ago. But in today's video we're going to talk a bit about this crazy clash of the titans that's about to hit over the next few months, and yes, pun intended. <laughs> We're about to see so many of the first person shooter behemoths going head to head like never before, and it's going to be very interesting to watch. Most years we get a Call of Duty release along with maybe one other big online FPS, possibly a Battlefield or a less regular release like a Destiny or Battlefront. But this year's release schedule is jam packed with online shooters. The big three are Call of Duty Infinite Warfare of course, it's time for another Battlefield with this year's Battlefield 1 changing things up at last, and Respawn Entertainment are now finally bringing Titanfall to PlayStation with Titanfall 2. And as if that wasn't enough, we also have big updates coming to Destiny and Battlefront as well as Overwatch still going strong. Now if you leave Overwatch out of it due to it having been released a few months ago, we're looking at a situation where EA and Activision are locking horns in an attempt to dominate the FPS genre, because Battlefield, Titanfall and Battlefront are all EA franchises, while Activision are behind the other two, COD and Destiny. So who's going to win this epic showdown? Can Activision's COD keep its domination going after all these years? Will having multiple similar games out around the same time hurt or help EA? And most importantly, which ones are you going to dedicate your time and money to? Let's see if we can break this down a bit, shall we? First up, Call of Duty. Now COD's been dominating the FPS genre for a while, despite many of its releases being slated by a lot of people for not being very innovative or original. Much of its domination, though, comes down to how good the earlier games such as Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2 were. They pulled in a huge fan base that got hooked, and have continued playing since because it's what they know and what they're good at. Those two earlier games in the series that we just mentioned were created by Vince Zampella and his team at Infinity Ward, and he really made Call of Duty what it is today. Vince was fired by Activision a long time ago, but they're still reaping the benefits of his success and brilliance. Once he was fired, he started up Respawn Entertainment, along with many of his original team from Infinity Ward, and as you know, they're the team behind the Titanfall series. I personally think the fact that Call of Duty has pretty much copied Titanfall beat for beat since the first game came out, what with the jetpacks and wall running etc, just goes to emphasise the lack of imagination on the part of the Call of Duty developers. I mean, when was the last truly innovative idea they came up with all on their own? It's all been small tweaks to Vince's original ideas, as well as traversal techniques borrowed from his more recent ones. They lost the guys that made the COD franchise so successful, but even now they have to go to them for ideas on where to take the Call of Duty formula next. You have to also factor in their inclusion of the remastered version of COD 4 if you pre-order. This is kind of cool and a nice added incentive, but if you read more into it, it's actually quite an ominous sign. The fact that they feel they need an added incentive to get people to pre-order displays a lack of confidence in their ability to continue dominating the genre. Maybe COD isn't the guaranteed record breaker each year that it once was. And the fact that the incentive is an older game in the series by Vince Zampella kind of backs up everything we've said. Another thing that makes their lack of vision and ambition even more evident is the decision that was made regarding this year's release. Three years ago, Call of Duty Ghosts finally tried something new with the Extinction Mode, which was a refreshing change from Zombies. Now although the game didn't review particularly well, that was mostly due to the competitive multiplayer and campaign not being up to scratch. The Extinction Mode was the one ray of sunshine from that game, and despite maybe not being quite as popular as Zombies, it was still beloved by a large number of players who really got stuck into it for months on end. Infinite Warfare is being developed by the same team as Ghosts, and it's set in space, so the Extinction Mode, which sees you battling aliens of course, would suit this year's release perfectly. Plus, so many of us spent hundreds of hours farming teeth for the upgrades, and we're really hoping they would carry over in some way. But no, they've made the lazy, safe decision to give us another Zombies mode for the third year in a row. Sure, you can argue that they're giving the majority of the fanbase what they want, but if you give someone too much of what they want, they're not going to want it for much longer. And those hardcore Zombies fans still have Treyarch's Black Ops 3 to play from last year, and their Zombies modes have always been the most popular since they were the ones to start off the whole idea. So, with so many other options out there, could this year be the year COD is dethroned? If so, which game will do it? Well, 
We have Battlefield 1 of course, but Battlefield has gone up against Call of Duty multiple times, and they both very much have their own established fan bases due to being very different games. Things have changed a little this year though, with the series going back to its World War 1 roots. Now, a lot of old school Call of Duty fans miss the days of the World War related campaigns, with their more powerful, emotive storylines and set pieces. Knowing that the heartbreaking events you're stuck in the middle of are based on real life makes it that much more potent and dramatic. But it looks as though Battlefield 1 is taking a slightly more tongue-in-cheek, gung-ho approach to it all rather than telling a gritty, realistic story based on real events. It seems to sport an almost alternate history style, not far off from how Wolfenstein was presented, I guess. But still, the change in style could draw a new crowd in, especially if people are disillusioned by the upcoming iteration in the Call of Duty series for whatever reason. If anything, it's probably Battlefront that will be in more direct competition with Battlefield though, due to them basically being reskinned versions of the same game in many ways. Of course, Battlefront was released last year, which is why there was no Battlefield around the same time, but we're seeing a big update with content based on the upcoming Rogue One movie, as well as the ability to play using virtual reality. So with EA being behind both titles, will this in-house competition be good or bad for them? Well, you could argue that they're not really in competition at all. Battlefront seemed to be aimed at Star Wars fans more than anyone, maybe the kind of people that wouldn't necessarily buy any online shooters, but did this time because of their love of the Star Wars franchise. So I think having both games out there shouldn't result in them vying for the same audience, but instead it allows EA to cover more bases and have a wider reach. The game that, in my opinion, will be in direct competition with Call of Duty is Titanfall 2. So which one will come out on top? Well let's consider a few things. Titanfall 1 sold really well when it first released as an Xbox exclusive, but the hysteria died down pretty quickly due to its dearth of content and variety, leading to a lack of longevity, despite it being tons of fun to play. So because of that, will people's most recent memory of it be a negative one and carry over as a preconception of what the sequel will be? They do seem to have rectified the issue this time by adding a campaign and hopefully padding out the online experience more so as well. Plus, of course, the big news is that it's PlayStation 4 bound. No Xbox exclusivity this time. How will the new larger audience take to a franchise that's fairly unknown to many of them? We already talked about how it feels as if Call of Duty has borrowed aspects of Titanfall's gameplay elements, but with the series being new to Sony's console, will the PlayStation players realize that, or will it look to them as if Titanfall is in fact copying Call of Duty? You see, and this doesn't apply to everyone by any means, but a sizable portion of the people who play these types of games don't necessarily keep up with gaming news or really follow the industry. So to some, it may look as though a Call of Duty clone with mechs has hit the market. Others who are already aware of Titanfall may assume it's another fun but ultimately shallow game, which it could still be, but I hope it's not. And there's one gameplay element that could stand in Respawn's way when it comes to potentially dominating the FPS genre. Now I very much like the inclusion of weaker bots in the matches that you can use for easy kills to charge your next available titan, but it does mean that player on player clashes aren't as frequent as they are on Call of Duty, and it's often that intense competition, that sense of elation when you get the better of someone, and the annoyance at yourself and the game when you're on the losing end of a showdown that keeps people coming back. Maybe Titanfall won't quite have that same feeling due to a lot of the games spent dealing with computer controlled AI. On the flip side though, that feature does mean it's easier for less experienced players to jump in and feel useful without dying constantly. And those same people may gravitate toward Titanfall, on PS4 at least, because it's an opportunity to get in early on a competitive franchise and stand more of a chance when they may feel like they left it too late for Call of Duty or are out of their depth if they try and get into it now. Titanfall is an amazingly fun game to play by one of the geniuses of the FPS genre, and I do hope that one day it will overtake Call of Duty, to force Activision to start putting more effort into their releases if nothing else. Vince Ampelera has built a world dominating franchise in the past so he can do it again, but when he did it last time there wasn't such a strong existing competitor already established, so it could take time. Whatever happens this holiday season though, there's certainly something for all of you if you're an FPS fan, whether you're open to change or you're committed to one of the existing powerhouses. Let us know in the comments below which game you think will sell the most, which you think will receive the best reviews, and most importantly which ones you plan on playing. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, I'm Stay Patient and I'm out.